so www.crossroadpulmonary.com. We will be um, posting, we're taking a video of how to build these. Um, we will be posting it, and as well, the BC, uh, BC Lung Foundation website has really great resources on how to build your own. And we'll share those too. And we'll share those as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, you could describe the um, materials that we yeah. have. So, when we're building these filters, we need uh, the actual box fan itself, and then the filter, which goes, uh, it's kind of on, it's taped on the back of the PO, if you can see that. But, uh, that's kind of, that's kind of what it looks like from the back there. Yeah, here's one of the, yeah. I'll hold it up. Oh, oh, am I showing? I'm showing online. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And so, you'll need uh, some tape as well. Then you'll need something to cut, like scissors, or we have box cutters here. And then we also like to have something to measure, a tape measure, a ruler, etc. And then we also like to sometimes put stickers on them as well, just to help personalize it, make it a bit uh, more unique. <laughs> That's optional, but uh, we like to do that. Um, should we get into it? Yeah, okay. let's do it. All right. So the first step that we're going to do is going to be to take it out of the box. And if either of you need a hand, uh, just let me know and I can help you out. You don't want any, you don't want any razor knife stuff, even though we're across from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch your fingers. That is a really bad thing. out of the box now and it'll come with instructions for the fan but uh we don't need those but you can hang on to them if you'd like so matt um where can we where can participants purchase these yeah so you can find all of these uh, materials at pretty much any hardware store like uh home depot or rona or uh lowe's etc you can also buy them on amazon one thing to note though is that can i just see your filter for a second the filter has to be a MERV 13 or better. Okay. And you'll see that usually they have them labeled somewhere on here. Might be on the bigger box that they came yeah. in. Yeah, they came, they came in a package. So we verified that these ones are MERV 13 or better. Um, but if they have like MERV, uh, basically it goes up from MERV 13 and it just has to be uh, at 13 or better in order for it to work as efficiently as we want it to. So after you've taken it out of the box, you're going to locate the two feet that come at the top underneath the handle there. Then they'll come attached with some plastic holding it together, and you can just rip it apart. Yep, just like that. Then we'll get the cord untangled here. And then once you've found the feet, you're going to put it face down and you'll see two slits at the bottom of the fan. And then the feet will go into the slits on the bottom of the fan here. And sometimes you might have to push a little bit, but basically it's just to help the fan stand up. So once they're in, it'll look like that. I have them just on the bottom there, so they'll stick out behind the fan once they're in. Okay, perfect. So, if you can't get them in all the way, that's fine, because we're going to be taping it afterwards anyway. It's mostly just to help it stand up. We found that some people don't have to put them in at all and the fans can stand up on their own, but the feet help just to keep it more stable. So once you've got the feet in, we're going to take the filter. And if you look along the edge of it, you'll see an arrow. This one has an arrow pointing this way. So you'll find the arrow on the side of the box there, or side of the filter. Yeah. 
and the arrow should face towards the fan fixed to the back of it. So it'll go above the feet and then the filter, or sorry, the arrow should point down. Yep, yeah, down towards the fan. So yeah, you got it perfectly right there. Excellent. And now you kind of want to so you put the filter a horizontal or vertical filter? Um, either or. Either or. Does it matter? It doesn't it matter. It just has to. We just have to make sure the arrow points towards the fan. Yeah. It can be like that, vertical or horizontal. Right. Vertical or horizontal doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. As long as the arrow is like you've got it there, that's perfect. Yeah. Well, it's just So after. You've situated the filter to the fan. We take our tape, <laughs> and we're gonna use a lot of tape. Tape the side? Yes. Yeah. So basically what we'll be doing is we'll tape, we'll do the demo here. Okay. Okay. You can see that we've taped the side of it along there. Yeah. All the way around all four sides. All four sides. Yeah. And the idea when we're taping it is basically we want to seal up all the cracks between the filter and the fan. So that way, when the air is getting filtered, it has to go through the filter and it can't sneak around the filter because we want it to reach the filter first and then go through the fan afterwards. So this is where the box cutter or the scissors comes in handy. Just watch your fingers. And then I find it easier to tape it along parallel with the filter as opposed to horizontal. That way it seals it up better and doesn't use as much tape. And one thing you might have noticed is that the filter corners stick out beyond the fan. That's okay. It doesn't have to be perfectly on, but we want it to be about as center as possible. And one other thing important to note as well is that when we're taping it, we don't want to cover the filter, right? You see how here, how I've got it kind of just along the cardboard part of it there. We don't want it to cross over the filter because that way it's just going to block the filter. And it can be tricky to get the tape on the bottom because we put the feet here. But one thing that I like to do is I like to take some tape very carefully slide it in between the feet and the fan.
is to make sure that we check on the filter and make sure that if it's dirty, then you have to replace them again. Mm -hmm. You just have to buy the Murphy PEPA filter and replace this. We find that usually the filters last for about six to eight months before they need to be replaced. But that's going to depend on the air quality in your home and you know, in your neighborhood and how often you have it on. But usually uh, about six to eight months is what we notice until it gets dirty up to or being, uh, being replaced. But you'll see it, it'll turn very dark once, uh, once it starts to pick up particulates in the room. It'll look like a totally new filter once it's time to get it changed. How are you folks doing? Yeah, thank you. Very good. One thing to remember too, is if you have a bigger bedroom, or if you wanted to put it in, the, in your living space, then you have to make sure that you have, you may need one or two of these box fans. So making sure that it works pretty well if you have the right number of box fans in your home. Hey Mark, how much are we looking at in terms of Materials. Um, usually, we found that the total cost to build one of these units comes out to about seventy-five dollars. Um, for that, you can get it maybe cheaper if you find parts like online. For instance, we've okay. we've had some people who found um, supplies online and they can do it for cheaper. But yeah. the the way that we do it, it usually comes out to about seventy-five dollars roughly per piece mm -hmm. per unit. So one commercial portable air cleaners could easily cost you around $150 or more. It depends on the size of, of the room that you're going to uh, use it for. So you may need to spend 500 to 700 if you want to have the right number of portable air cleaners in your home, or just create or make one or two of these box funds for $75 a piece. So you save a lot of money. Um, Mark, in terms of electricity, electrical consumption, are they, are they cost saving or something? Um, yeah, we found that it's not too expensive to run them pretty regularly. Although sometimes if you're like, if you're leaving the room for, uh, to go to work or to go to school or what have you, it might be worth it to turn it off during that period and to turn it back on once you're once you're home or you're, once you're you know, ready to go to bed and have it in the bedroom or if you're hanging out in the living room. But if the cost is also an issue, then we can, we can put it on the low setting. You'll notice that these fans have a, a zero, a three, and a two, and a one. I don't think you need much. I mean, that's our no. So once you've taped around the perimeter of the filter there, one important thing to note is to check in the corners because as I mentioned before, the corners will stick out beyond the fan. So sometimes there are some gaps in there, just something to keep in mind and tape up again. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered along the fan because we're going to be taping up the holes anyway. Okay. So we just wanted to get it kind of close, kind of accurate to about centering the fan there. Okay, looks like we're just about done these sides here. So then do you know of any other uh, BC run community events to make these filters other than the Abbotsford one? There are other, but it's in Oliver and somewhere in the Okanagan area. Okay. Because most of those are areas that are usually smoked out 
you know, the Wi-Fi system. Okay. But if there is any request, I know that we, they have been doing somewhere in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I yeah, know that there will be more. Yeah, uh, some um, more in the Lower Mainland, particularly yeah. in Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, perhaps in Westminster or other cities yeah. or, or nearby. But if you, if there are those who are interested hosting this uh, workshop and sponsoring this workshop, they will be happy to come to your community and do this project. Yeah, we'd be happy to host, uh, to host more of these workshops for sure. We're looking to do it all kind of throughout the summer and then maybe into yeah. the fall as well. So once we've got the filter taped to the back of it, we're gonna tape a little shroud around the perimeter of the front of it. So we're gonna flip it over and then from each of the four sides, left, right, top, and bottom. Hey, Mathis, can you tell them what the shroud is? Yeah, yeah. The wire, but yeah. So the shroud, basically, around the edge of the fan, if it was left just as it is, untaped, then it's going to take some of the dirty air and it's going to suck it back into the front of the fan. If you were to turn this on and hold, like, a light piece of plastic, you would notice that it would stick to the perimeter of it, whereas if it's near the center, it would get blown away. So basically, we tape around the perimeter kind of in an octagon shape because we want to prevent air from getting sucked back, dirty air that is, to get, prevent it from getting sucked back into the fan. If we tape around here, then that way, once the air gets filtered to the back, it'll get pushed out through the front and go into the room as nice clean air. And taping around the perimeter will prevent it from get from the, will prevent the dirty air from getting sucked back into it. So taping the shroud around the perimeter is basically just to make it better at cleaning the air in the room. Could you not put the filter on the outside so everything that comes out of the fan goes through? We could. Um, that would have some uh, some benefit, or it would work to some degree, but the issue is that it wouldn't blow out as efficiently. So we found that putting it on the back and then taping around gives a little better um, uh, in terms of cleaning the air. Thank you. You're welcome. Like, kind of on that note, if we were to not tape the front of it, then it would still work, it just wouldn't work as well. So it's just a matter of making it work that much better. So, from the left and the right, and the top and the bottom, we'll measure two and a half inches from the edge of the fan. So you'll notice that it'll come out to about the second line on the left and right. And then to the fourth line, one, two, three, four, from the top and bottom. And that's measuring from the edge of the fan into the fan there. I'll show the instructions to the online as well. So right now we're taping kind of a square. I don't know if you can see that there, but we're taping a square around it, a 2.5 inch border around. And you'll notice that one piece of tape is not big enough to get the 2.5 inch border around. So you will have to do two or more pieces overlapping. Please let them have at it. We find that the 3M and the duct tape, duct tape brand 
Oh, uh, what's that? Yeah. You can probably get away with trying other brands of duct tape, but that's personally just what we, what, what, what we find works best in terms of being able to get it off, but also being strong enough to hold it together. Okay, so this is the end. And one other thing about the fans as well is that they should be uh, 75 watts or more power. Can you say that one more time, Matt? Yeah. So for the fans, they should be about 75 watts or more. So minimum 75 is what we're looking for. Um, how powerful it is, how much energy it's using. We want it to be a uh, minimum of 75 watts so that it's powerful enough to push the air. Yeah, exactly. So I guess when you change the air filter, you might want to change the tape as well. Yeah. Because that is probably going to trap stuff as well. Mm, yeah. The sticky side of the tape. Yeah, it'll definitely trap some, uh, some dirt or you know, dust or particulates in there. So that's what it looks like for those online. When we pick the 2.5 inch border all around, it comes out to on the left and right. The second, you can't see it now, but there's one, two lines there and one, two lines. So that's on the left and right. And then on the top and the bottom, it'll be about four lines deep. So we have one, two, three on the fourth line is where it comes out to on the top and bottom. These are just estimates, but it should be about 2.5 inches from edge to the inside of the border. And you see that I've got two pieces of tape on each side here because one side or one piece of tape isn't wide enough to reach the edge of the fan and then also the 2.5 inches inside. Uh, so the filters should last, we notice around six or eight months, but that's going to depend on how often you're running it or how dirty the air in the room is or what the um, outside weather is like. Like for instance, during wildfire season, the smoke might make it dirty up a bit faster, but you'll see right now that it's pretty much uh, clean, but you'll notice that it'll become a lot dirtier once it starts to pick up uh, pollutants. It'll turn like to gray or black, but usually about six or eight months is what we notice that it lasts until it needs to be. Pardon me? Can you vacuum the filter to make it last longer? Um, we don't recommend doing that because it could damage the integrity of the filter. You're welcome to give it a try, but it could damage the filter, make it less effective. We recommend to just leave it as it is and then to wait a few months, again, about six or eight months minimum. Uh, and then to remove it, remove the tape throw the filter out, and then you can tape a new filter onto the back of it, just as we've done today. Okay. And the, the filters, like if you've ever changed one of these in, in a furnace or anything, they're quite dirty. They get <laughs> yes. quite dirty. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to really be bringing that in, you would imagine, um, which might, you know, happen with vacuuming. Um, but. And I think, Matt, you'd mentioned um, that they're a MERV 13 yep. or higher. Yeah, that's right. 
We use MERV 13 because that's a nice balance between cost and effectiveness, but we recommend, yeah, MERV 13 or better in terms of the filter, the filtration. So we'll take tape for four borders like this. We're gonna measure 5.3 inches from each of the corners. So it'll come out to about here and it'll give it an octagon kind of shape. So we're just gonna take the four corners on an angle and it'll kind of look like an octagon. We'll show you what it looks like um, after I've taped it here. Again, that's 5.3 inches from the edge of each corner. It's a fun little craft you can do. If you're noticing that it's making a weird noise, that could be something wrong el electrically with the fan. Um, and that could, you might want to take it off and just examine if the fan's working properly. Um, but usually we're just looking for the visual discoloration of the filter, right? We're looking for it to turn like a gray or a black kind of color. And another thing too, is you want to avoid getting moisture on the filter itself because that'll um, damage the integrity, kind of like vacuuming. It just won't work as effectively if it's uh, damaged with moisture. Okay, another reminder though, most of the complaints that we get for using short or fill cleaners, whether it's a commercial grade or uh, a box fan, something that you, you do it yourself, is a little bit of noise. So when you're sleeping at night time, you know, you could put it in a very low setting so that it doesn't create as much noise. Because I think the odds against it is the noise. So just warning you though. <laughs> Just check the 
type of filter on your furnace or on your heat pump. Um, and if it is a 13 or higher, then, then the answer is no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't need this. You've got a great central filter, filter unit. So this is all. I'll write out that answer in the chat too. So this is what yeah. the shroud will look like once you've taken all the four corners you see it has like an octagon shape. Uh, mine's not exactly perfect, but that's kind of the general idea. 2.5 inches along the side of the square, and then 5.3 inches from the corner. So this is what, and you can... Uh, each of the corners there. Yeah, can you and then you can, can also, you can color on it, you can put some stickers on it, paint it, okay. make it yours, make it pretty. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what a finished product looks like. Um, uh, what is the reason uh, why we have to make it um, hexagon. Oh, this is the shroud. The shroud. Yeah, why make it hexagon? Yeah, it's to prevent um, air being sucked in from the front, like dirty air. Because oh. if you if you were to turn it on without the shroud, yeah. you just leave it like this, and you yeah. put a piece of plastic, you would notice that it would be sucked into it. Here and around the center, it would get blown out, oh. but around the sides, the it gets sucked back in. So we want to prevent air from getting sucked back into it. So we. Try to make it like a tunnel. Yeah, pretty like much. Yeah, that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. That's because basically we want the air to force it through the filter. Yeah. And then we want it to come out and disperse into the room. Mm -hmm. But if we left the sides of it untaped, yeah. then some other air could leak in and get sucked back in. But because it's getting sucked into the front, it's not going through the filter, so mm -hmm. it's not doing its job. Mm -hmm. So basically, the shroud is kind of like you said to make it a tunnel, so that way it has to go through the filter and then it gets forced out through the center mm. and into the room. Mm. And that's pretty much how we've done mm. it. So that's the reason we make it a uh, hexagon shape. Right? Yeah, that's exactly mm. right. Mm. Not, not triangle or no square shape. Right? Nah. Mm. You probably could maybe, if you didn't have like, let's say if you ran out of tape yeah. and you could only get the sides, that's better than nothing. It's just that with the four corners as well, yeah. that's uh, better than just the, the square. Mm. If you notice the other one, they put in like carbon. Yeah, the couple. Yeah, you could do that as well, but it takes too much work. Oh, it takes yeah. too much work. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. oh. We figure since we're using tape already, it's easier to just tape it. But yeah, yeah. yeah here's another demonstration of someone who uh, had put cardboard, a taped cardboard around instead. Mm. Um, that's another option that you can do mm. if, if that's something that you prefer. Although we just find it easier if we tape this since we're already using so much tape on it. But uh, yeah, you got some options. Yeah, this is done by a member of our Better Beauty Club as well, and he donated five. So for those who really, really wanted to have one, we can have it donated. He made five, though, so we can donate those to some people who really want it. So That's excellent. Great. So should they uh, get a chance to do it? Yeah. Okay. Alright, if you're interested, get in touch with Matt at DC1. <laughs> and then to transport it, one thing you can do as well is you can put it back into the box. It just has to go in upside down so the feet will stick out a little bit. Okay. Um, if you're transporting it, let's say if you're walking home with it, or if you're taking it on the bus, some people find it easier to put it back in the box and then tape a handle on it so you can carry it like a bag or like a purse or something mm -hmm. like that. Easier to do it on the ground. Yeah. Kind of a tight fit, but it should go in if you push it just a little bit. Yeah. 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 Y